So, my friend Daniel Seraf is back again. If you're not familiar with Daniel, he's an incredible player, an incredible teacher. I'll have his YouTube channel linked down below. We've been working on a video course down here for the last couple of days, and there's this idea that came up in the course that I wanted to make a video about and talk about here. You call it the three T's, tone, touch, and time. People focus a lot on like notes and crazy scales and these things and that, and it's like, man, when we listen to the great masters of the guitar, they're mostly playing the pentatonic scale, yep. adding in like those two other notes that live in the major scale family. Occasionally you get some crazy stuff, but overall it's like really straightforward. And that big thing that separates the masters that we love so much versus an amateur guitarist essentially is like these, these three T's. Hey, Rhett here. Just wanted to quickly break in and say that today's video is sponsored by the Guitar Solo Survival Guide Live Workshop. This is the first time I'm ever doing anything like this. On February 29th, my friend Daniel Seraph and I are going to team up to teach a live workshop over Zoom on the Guitar Solo Survival Guide video course. This is a full-length course Daniel and I did together, which basically gets you up to speed on learning how to improvise and play solos with other people in a band setting or over music that you might be writing or recording. Now, it's not just the video course on February 29th we're teaching an in-person live workshop so if you enroll before then you can get access to the full course and the workshop where you can ask us questions directly about the topics in the guitar solo survival guide if you're watching this later you can still get access to the workshop and the course via the link down below and you can find out more information down there with all that out of the way let's talk about the three T's so yeah let's, uh, the first one First one's tone. That doesn't have to just be a gear thing. Yeah, I don't I don't want people to think about it as a gear thing. I mean, obviously we're spoiled for gear down here. Totally. We're playing through great guitars, Love and it. great amps and everything. But arguably my favorite part of playing guitar is dialing in and thinking about the guitar sound because it is your voice. And mm -hmm. a lot of times as guitar players, we get caught up when we're listening to music or other guitar players about what are they doing. But the thing is, I think most people who are listening to music or listening to you play, they're paying attention to the sound and the texture and the color mm -hmm. of what you're playing, whether they're conscious of it or not. And, you know, for example, like I'm playing in this, uh, uh, this Benson Vincent that you brought down. Super for great me to amp. Check out really cool amp. Here's three different sounds. I'll play the same kind of idea, but with three different sounds. So the first thing is just me straight into the amp, right? So like, uh, Great guitar into a great amp sound. Now what happens if I do this octafuzz kind of thing? It's harsher, it's more angsty. It also made me play differently. You're playing very differently, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Versus something like this, a big giant washy reverb, for example. So like a three different colors that made me play the same idea three different ways and hopefully made the listener feel different just based off of the tone. All right, so touch. That leads perfectly into touch because touch has so much of an effect on your tone, right? Right. So I have a lot of guitar students and have taught for a long time. And I was sitting in a lesson, I was like, man, this guy's like playing this amazing rig. Why does that sound so bad? Like what's going on here? And I just told him, hey man, I want you to try and play the guitar just with like a lighter picking attack in the, in the right hand. And I kid you not, it was a night and day difference. So then we worked a little bit on his like left hand. I was like, okay, can you stop pressing so hard in the left hand? Yeah. And all of a sudden the notes opened up and they blossomed. Touch could be looked at like in a lot of different angles. The way you're vibratoing, you know, the way you're picking, those types of things. The angle of your pick, all that stuff. Yeah. But I think in general, most people just over press and over pick. So what would you tell someone who's maybe struggling with this concept? Maybe they're playing too hard. How should they approach practicing and, and getting this under their hand? If you're 
you know, trying to like figure out the right hand. Like how, how light can I pick and still make great, great sound? How heavy can I pick? Yeah. I might try and think literally like, all right, what's my one? Like where's my, the lightest I can pick, right? And then say, okay, well, where's two? And where's three? And you know, the left hand is cool because you can kind of do this thing where you go from muted to where you're subtly pressing the note down and you find that place like, where's the minimal tension in the left hand yeah. that I can press and still get a sound? And it's a lot less than you think. Yeah. In fact, our friend uh, Ella Feingold mm -hmm. talks about this. She calls it shading and she's Ooh. so good at it, which is in the left hand, this idea of being able to like control how much of the chord or the note is coming through mm. just in your left hand. Yeah. And it takes practice. <laughs> So touch and then time, arguably the most important part of any musicianship, but particularly for guitar players. I make my practice as fun as possible, mm. and I make my practice as direct to music as possible. What I'll do is I will target specific rhythms. So I'm gonna go ahead, and I'm gonna turn the delay off even right. though I do love it. Um, and I'm gonna target and practice improvising just quarter notes. Okay. How much music can I make with just quarter notes? So, for those of you out there, it's it's our pulse, right? Yeah. And so that's two, three, four, one. So first of all, mindfulness. Yeah. I'm just in it. I like, I'm listening to the hats, I'm listening to the kick and the snare and the bass part. It's a groove and it's a great track. You guys definitely should download it. All right, so I'm gonna target by just playing quarters. And I like to start out with four times each note. I get yeah. to hang out there. I'm not playing the scale up and down. You yeah. know, I'm practicing improvising. And it's basic right now. I might decorate a note with a hammer on, a grace note, a slide, a pull off. All right, so then I'll go to two times each. Maybe I have a scale shape that I'm not as comfortable with. I'll kind of hang out in that area. I yeah. can do a lot of things at the same time. One time each. Now for me, that means that I'm playing every note with a downstroke because right. my rhythm and my picking are connected. Then I'm gonna go to eighth notes, four times each. Now I'm like really thinking about where's that upstroke landing? Yeah. Like now I'm in that hi-hat land and I'm trying to connect with that, right? Yeah, right. One time. So, an important thing, I'm not noodling. Right. I am practicing with intent. When I get to the gig, yeah. then I get to be free and play with just let go. And the one thing I was just noticing there was that you were sort of uh, highlighting the backbeat. Like every time you'd mm -hmm. land on a two or four with the snare, you were really leaning into those notes. Mm -hmm. So some, some ways to practice that is like with this track, just don't play, turn the track on, and just listen to the drums. Yes. So this is uh, Jake Reed, a, a drum sample that I bought from Jake Reed. He's an amazing drummer from LA. But if you listen to, there's a, there's three elements to focus on here, the kick, the snare, and the hi-hat. So the hi-hat is just giving us that kind of 16th note. That's kind of our metronome. That's what's kind of keeping time. The snare, it's a little syncopated, but for the most part, it's on two and four. One, two, three, four. He's doing some nice ghost note rolls mm -hmm. and things. And then the kick is where we're getting our syncopation from. So that, uh, uh, uh. And you uh, played the uh, bass on it, and I, yeah. you shadowed that yes, kick, right? Right. So as a bass player, I'm really highlighting what the bass is doing, because that's where the groove is coming from. The relationship of the kick and the snare here is really where that groove is happening. Totally. So as a guitar player, we can think about that. If you take your exercise a step further, but think about like the ba 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 ba. I 
feel you right in there, in yeah. the groove, in the pocket, and it feels like it's not like a track and you. Right. It's and you are with the band. All I'm doing is focusing on just going, da, 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 uh, 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 uh. And then you can fill in the space in between, but as long as you've got that kind of core groove happening. <laughs> That is one one really amazing approach, right? But kind of just like we were saying earlier, it's like with your tone stacking, like, oh, okay, cool, I have a basic tone, I have another option, another option. That might not always be the move, right? Yeah. Sometimes actually being juxtaposed like and pushing against the band in a way is the thing that sounds the coolest. Yeah, take that example. Like, let's put on a really long delay mm -hmm. and some reverb and then play over. And in this case, like I want the the time-based effects to do the most of the work for me. So I'm gonna keep my note choices really simple and my my time and touch really sparse mm. and let the sound, the tone, kind of do the talking. So like uh like that might be your entire solo or your entire lead part so to speak right or maybe that's just like the introduction to it I mean that's that's tone and it's touch and it's and, time yeah, it's all together <laughs> and it gives you somewhere to go that's what's cool about it it's like you don't have to worry about well what licks do I know that I can put over this or how like how do I break out of these ideas like man maybe just throw on a, a interesting sound and let the sound do the work mm -hmm. for you yeah you know and keep your playing really really simple so Hope you enjoyed this little uh, lesson here. If you like this, we have a whole video course that just dropped. It's called the Guitar Solo Survival Guide, and we basically take concepts like this and go super in-depth. There's three distinct backing tracks uh, for that course, one of which we were playing today, which you can download down below. I'll have links to Daniel's video courses as well as his YouTube channel and everything down below. He has his own course called Solo on Guitar, which... Uh, Kind of covers a lot of these same concepts. In a lot a of concepts, way. yeah. Different scales, like get to the music as quickly. That's that's like my biggest thing. Yeah. I want to get everyone to the music as quickly as possible and kind of hone it in from there. So go check out Daniel. Uh, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much.